Yo, what's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans, SEC fans everywhere? Welcome to the one and only Pictron Network YouTube channel. I'm Ty Hudson. Hope you guys are doing great. Myself, can't complain. I want to say to you guys, if you would, at the end of the video, or now, whatever's best for you, to uh, like the video, uh, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, feel free to check out all the links provided for you down below in the description box where you can find this bad boy right here. The link to the PTN Patreon page. If you join, hey, it goes towards helping out the channel and uh, you make this list of names. Got some real OGs on this list too. Got some Discord members there. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. Special shout out to those all-stars right there. Appreciate you guys. All right, this video is about none other, and I'm sure you know, but I'm going to do it anyways. None other than this guy right here, Kendall Bryles. Oh, Kendall. That if looks could kill. That's look, that's the last thing defensive coordinators see before they go to sleep at night, right there. Kendall Bryles, his name was brought up on a coaching search at South Carolina. We know this because a website called thestate.com filed a open records request, and what they ended up finding was a whole bunch of emails. And one of those emails was was sent to South Carolina Athletic Director Ray Tanner. And in the email, and he received this email from his chief of staff, Executive Associate Athletic Director Charles Bloom, in the email, the subject line simply read coaches. And the body of the email was a list of 10 head coaches and coordinators in college football and their salaries at that time. Now, do we know that South Carolina reached out to all these names? I don't know. But when you look at this list, it's impressive, right? Mario Cristobal at Oregon, Brian Harson at Boise State, Alabama at the time, offensive coordinator uh, Steve Sarkeesian, Luke Fickle was on that list, Skip Holtz, Sonny Dykes, Jamie Chadwell. I mean, you know, the rest is history, but as far as what happens to these names on this list, you guys, you guys can put one and one together. But Arkansas offensive coordinator Kendall Bryles' name making that list is interesting, to say the least. It shows that even despite a bumpy kind of – you know, the, his gig at Florida State wasn't exactly great. They had some flashes of, of great moments on offense, but overall not what Florida State fans wanted. Year one at Arkansas, it's kind of hard. It's hard to judge one way or another because of COVID, but I think you could argue he found some moments of success at Arkansas as well year one and obviously didn't do enough to put a big dent in his reputation because he made this list. Uh, back on, I think they sent this email, was on November 10th, if I read that correctly. So they hadn't even fired Muschamp yet. We don't know if they reached out to all these names, how serious of a candidate Kendall Browse ever was. Regardless, someone at another P5 school in the SEC added his name to a list of, of 10 coaches. He was one of only two offensive coordinators. So was Sam Pittman thinking ahead when he made the hiring of Dow Lat Logan's Sounds like a country music star from the 80s. He's your new tight end coach. What's his background? Okay, this is not a guy that's that's coached tight ends before in college. As far as I know, he's never coached tight ends, period. He's a former NFL offensive coordinator. He was a, an NFL OC at multiple, pro, at multiple places in the NFL franchises, multiple franchises. He was an offensive coordinator. Not one, not two, not three. But multiple NFL offenses felt confident enough in his ability to be an offense coordinator, to call the plays on the offensive side of the ball for their uh, respected teams. You saw what Sam Pittman did when you lost your, uh, I would argue, pretty good name in, in who you had coaching your offensive line. Who stepped in to, to fill the void? Who stepped in to take that job? Your former tight end coach, Cody Kennedy. Is he doing the same with Dow Logan's? for Kendall Bryles. Look, I get it. You know, when connecting the dots, when you had an offensive line coach take another job, you had your next guy up in Coach Kennedy. There was no coaching search, you know, for the offensive line coach. You had him on your staff. You promoted him. Boy, that sure is attractive to other up, up and coming coaches. Why? This guy, Sam Pittman, he, he promotes from within. Not only that, maybe Coach Kennedy is the right guy for the job. We know they have a history together. Maybe the same thing's happening with your new tight end coach because of his past in the NFL. Maybe he is the next guy up if Kendall Bryles doesn't return for year three. 
I don't think that happens. Mostly because his offenses in the NFL, as far as I know, weren't overly successful. But I see again where the dots are being made, where they're being connected, rather. And I have talked to some of you in Twitter DMs and Discord DMs and on Facebook about these connections. So again, I thought I'll, I'll make a video on it. Is it on the table as a possibility? Sure. For this tight end coach to eventually take over as the offense coordinator. Is it on the table? I'm sure it is. Do I think that it actually happens? No, I don't. So circling back to who this video is about, our, our killer here, our killer, Ruff, Kendall Bryles. What do you think? How do you think year two goes with KB? Is the offense better? Is it the same? Is it worse? And do you think he's back for year three or not? Give me your list. Tell me what you think happens. Does Kendall Bryles have a, a really successful year two? Does that lead to him returning? If not, who's your replacement? That's what I want to know. Again, down below in the comments section. I'm Ty Hudson. Thanks a lot. Till the next video, we'll pick.